Okay, can you see that screen, Daphne? You can see the presentation, that's perfect. Okay, I'm going to get started now then. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into this session. And just to, to quickly introduce myself, my name is Dave Berry, and I'm Nottingham Trent University's Regional Manager for East Asia. So my, my role at the university is to support our future students from places like Taiwan um, with their application to the university. So I'm here to answer any questions you have about our application process, our courses, our accommodation, or our city, for example. Um, I'm also a member of our alumni community. I graduated from Nottingham Trent University in 2008 um, and I loved the city of Nottingham so much I never left it. So I stayed here um, afterwards after I graduated and I've now lived in the city for almost 20 years. Um, my email address is on screen right now in case you would like to contact me at any point and I will also share my email address at the end of this presentation as well. Now, my initial presentation will just be a short introduction to Nottingham Trent University and the city of Nottingham, just in case some of you don't know too much about us. But after my presentation, the main event of today's session will be a portfolio guidance presentation that will be delivered by my colleague Wallace Murdoch. Wallace is our head of academic projects for Nottingham School of Art and Design. And so he is an expert in this area. So please do listen carefully to the to the guidance that Wallace is going to issue. Anyway, let's get started. So as I said, we're going to talk a little bit about the city of Nottingham and our campus, our awards, international community. I'll also talk to you a little bit about employability and career support as well. And I'll also mention um, scholarships and some key web pages for you too. So for those of you that don't know where we are located, we are in the city of Nottingham, which is a very popular student city. There are two very large universities located here, including our own. And between those two universities, there are approximately 80,000 students. The city population of Nottingham is around 330,000 people within the central city area. And in wider suburbs, if you include them, it's around 600,000 people. It's very centrally located, um, which means that you can access the city very easily from various airports, including Birmingham International Airport, um, as well as um, the London airports, such as Heathrow and Gatwick, and also Manchester as well. So accessing the city is very, very straightforward. Because of its central location, it's also easy for you to explore different parts of the United Kingdom whilst you're studying here. There is a central train station in Nottingham, for example, where you can travel to different cities such as London, Manchester, Birmingham, Oxford, York, Sheffield, places like this. All these places that you can explore to find out more about the country more widely as well. Some of our most famous sites, you might recognise this one. This is Woolerton Hall officially, but you might know it as Wayne Manor because this this building actually featured in the Dark Knight series of the Batman um, series of, of films. It was Batman's house. And every time I visit this with my with my family, I have to find a, a new excuse to explain to my six year old son why Batman is not home today and why he can't come out and say hello. So it's a it's a very very popular place for people to go for a picnic or go for a walk, for example, it's very, very close to our city campus. Nottingham is also known as the city of caves. This is because we have an underground network of natural caves that run beneath the city. And the city has really tried to take advantage of these incredible atmospheres by creating things like this. This is the Lost Caves, which is a bar which is built inside a cave that runs underneath the city. We're also home to the world's oldest pub. This is Ye Olde Trip to Jerusalem, which was established in 1189. This is a fantastic place to go for a drink or a bite to eat with some friends. Um, it's somewhere that I often take my friends that are visiting me in the city, um, as it's, it's quite a, a well-known landmark here. And you may also know Nottingham because of our most famous son, which is Robin Hood, the man, the myth, the legend. And we love him so much in the city that we've built a statue of him. So I always say to students, um, take a picture of this, take a selfie with Robin Hood um, and send that back to your parents so that they know that, that Robin's, Robin's myth and legend is looking out for you. 
City Campus now. So this is one of our um, four, in fact, five campuses now that we have, but this is the campus where the majority of our students are based. And it's also where most of our students from Taiwan will be studying, particularly students that are studying art and design courses. This is because this campus is home to our School of Art and Design, and also our School of Architecture, Design and Built Environment. So students studying um, any programmes within these faculties will be based on the city centre campus, which is a short walk away from the very centre of the city with excellent transport links to that as well. Nottingham School of Art and Design, which is the faculty that Wallace works for. Um, this is, is arguably one of the university's most famous faculties, certainly on a global scale. We are ranked and have been ranked for several years now in the world's top 100 schools for art and design um, by QS, so we're extremely proud of that. And this is just one of the, the facilities, one of the features that you will have access to as an art and design student here. This is our brand new design and digital arts building which is scheduled to be complete very soon in fact i believe it was supposedly due to be completed in march or april of this year but it will be ready in time for september 2024 entry for students that are hoping to join us in the next academic year this facility is i've said it's a 35 million pound facility i believe the investment was actually even more than that now um but it's a fantastic state-of-the-art building which is going to be quite iconic in the city of nottingham and somewhere that i think our students are going to love studying we also, of course, have our School of Architecture, Design and Built Environment, where we teach many programmes, including architecture, interior architecture and design, as well as various product design programmes as well. So I believe that these are the programmes that, that the students on this call are most interested to hear about. We are ranked very well for this, and we're ranked in the top 10 in the UK for architecture graduate projects and um, prospects, sorry. And we're also second in the UK for the number of students studying design-based subjects. So the summary of that is that we are very, very popular for this subject area more broadly. Speaking of our students, we are in one of the UK's largest institutions now with around 39,000 students studying with us and around 16% of our population is from outside of the UK. So I always say to students that studying at Nottingham Trent gives you really the best of both worlds. You are going to get a British university experience because of course we are in the very heart of the UK and also most of the students on campus are from the UK. But being such a large institution means that even that 16% of our student body being international, and um, although it's a smallish percentage, this is a sizable international student community with thousands of students from overseas that will help you to grow your global friendship network. These are just some of our students um, that have recently done interviews for our website. Daphne, you might recognise one of the students on that page. This is Fan Wei, who was a Jingham student. Um, he received Daphne's support a few years ago now. Um, and also Pei Cha, also known as Jasmine. Um, these these um, students were both scholarship winners um, for art and design and architecture courses. Um, so please do check out our website to find out more about their experience at the university and hear about their, their time at to you. We've had an incredible period of success at the university in recent years. We've been named the Modern University of the Year by the Times and the Sunday Times in 2023. We were also named the University of the Year at the What Uni Student Choice Awards, which is the largest student voted award ceremony for the higher education sector in the UK. So our students ranked us first. We also won the postgraduate category at the same award ceremony, so a fantastic period of success for us. And more recently, and I know sustainability is, is perhaps something that, um, that Wallace may touch upon. It's very, very important as part of, of the School of Art and Design. But NTU more, bro more broadly was named the second most sustainable university in the world for the last two years. Unfortunately, um, we were pipped to the post by a Dutch institution who came first, um, but we came second in the world, which is something that we're really, really proud of as sustainability is very close to the university's heart. 
I'm coming to a close for my bit of the presentation now, but I did want to introduce you to some of our scholarship opportunities. As mentioned, Daphne has previously supported um, um, FanWave, just one of the students that she's assisted um, with, with helping him to achieve a scholarship with us. We do offer scholarships that are worth up to 50% of the tuition fee, um, so that could save you a significant amount of money. And we also have an exclusive scholarship for students that are based in Taiwan, which is worth £4,000. All of our scholarships are competitive, which means that you do have to send an application for a scholarship in order to be considered. But please do give this a try. The worst thing that can happen is that you receive an email that says, I'm sorry, you've not been successful. But the best thing that happens is that you could potentially forever be able to say that you were a scholarship winner at one of the world's top 100 art and design schools, which um, is something to be really, really proud of. Just to finish, there are some useful pages on the screen now. This is just some information for our students in Taiwan and um, how to apply to the university. You can also see some um, guidance on our portfolio requirements as well, as well as taking a virtual tour of our campus, which um, we've recently updated. It's a really immersive, fantastic tour, so please do check that out. Um, and finally, just a reminder, if you do have any questions at all about studying with the university, you're very welcome to contact me directly. Or, of course, you can seek expert support from Daphne, who has, has assisted many students um, with, with their applications to NTU in the past. I'm sure she'll be happy to help if you'd like to speak to somebody there in Taiwan. That is it from me. Thank you, everybody, for listening to my part of the presentation. I'm now going to hand over to Wallace, who will deliver the portfolio guidance session. Thank you. Okay, just make sure I can, you can all see this. Give me a sec. No, it's not letting me test me. Give me a second. Yep. Can you see that okay? Yep, that's perfect, Wallace. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do today is just talk you through developing a portfolio. I'm going to show you both undergraduate and postgraduate. And I know that a lot of students from Taiwan are actually postgraduate applications, but it does show you the level of work that students will have done at undergraduate level to then apply for postgraduate level. Um, and I'm going to then focus very much on process. I'm going to show you a lot of different images. Some of the images will be repeated in different sections of the presentation to really help you understand what's required uh, within a portfolio. Um, as Dave said, we are one of the largest schools of art and design in the UK. We have three very distinct departments. Uh, we've got fashion textiles and network design, fashion management, marketing, communication, and design and digital arts. The image on the top of the screen is the first art and design building within the university. And Dave, as Dave has talked about, um, our new um, building will be opening in April, um, at the end of April 2024, and will welcome um, our first group of students in September. Most of our courses are very much learning by doing, so very practically based courses even a number of the courses within the fashion management area. There is a practical element to sort of those particular courses. Um, we're a very diverse community um, and we cover um, creativity, technology and business and management within our portfolio. So we've got expertise across a wide range of subject areas and we've got very flexible working spaces. And these are some of our fashion management marketing and communication type spaces and then we've obviously got very traditional studios and workshop spaces that our students can actually use. Um, social justice is a really important part um, of our philosophy um, so we do a wide range of external projects with different um, communities both sort of locally and internationally. Um, a couple of these projects are where we work with a homeless charity, another one where we work with a blind charity. And it's really to, to get our students to think about themselves as very much socially responsible designers uh, and understanding the breadth of what's required within um, the design industry. And sustainable thinking is absolutely crucial. Uh, the Rebel Tartan project that you can actually see on the uh, left of the screen is a project that we work with a number of different universities in the UK, China, Japan and India. 
where we look at um, the development of sustainable product. So sustainability is key to everything that we actually do. And we want our students to be responsible, sustainable designers in their approach. This just gives you an indication of the, the structure of art and design and education in the UK. Uh, most UK students would go from high school, they do a foundation in art and design before they did their degree. They then do three or four years within the specialist subject, and then they would actually make an application for postgraduate. So most students in the UK will actually have done quite an intensive study of art and design before they apply for undergraduate or postgraduate level study. So in terms of portfolio, I'm going to talk sort of generally and then very specifically to undergraduate and postgraduate. Um, we want to see both primary and secondary research. Um, we want to see your most interesting pieces of work, and that's including unrefined and development work. We don't want just to see finished work. We want to see your creative development. So that creative journey through your sketchbook is very important. We want to see a wide range of ideas and media as appropriate to the subject that you're applying with. And we want to see experimentation with process and an understanding of process. But that creative journey is very important. And we need to see that within the work that students actually submit. And why do we ask for a portfolio? Um, a portfolio to us is like another qualification. You know, it's showing your creative ability. Um, so we want to see how you develop ideas your individuality and imagination, and your level of creative and technical skills. And depending on the level that you're applying for, um, those would actually be variable. But obviously, postgraduate students would have more creative and technical skills than a student who applies to undergraduate. But really importantly, we want to see your personality through your work. We want to see your personality and your individuality. You know, we want every portfolio to be different and demonstrate who that creative student actually is. So when we talk about undergraduate portfolios, um, these are some of the core things that we actually look for. So we want to see the development of concepts and ideas. We want to see core art and design skills, so drawing, colour application, uh, painting, those kind of things. We do want to see examples of project-based work at undergraduate that relate to the major that you want to specialise in. So at least some of your portfolio needs to be relevant to fashion design or graphic design or product design. We also want to see within your personal investigation some understanding of the current context and issues um, within your subject area. Uh, the passion for the subject should be demonstrated within the work. And these are a couple of pointers that I always um, say to students, both undergraduate and postgraduate. Check the specific portfolio requirements for your individual course, because different universities may ask for quite different things. Um, and really, correct, really check the, the correct digital format, because again, different universities, different subjects may require it in a different format. So although you may have a, a general portfolio, it's really important that both undergraduate and postgraduate that you ensure that you've actually, the submission uh, is appropriate. Some portfolio submissions will ask you for a specific number um, of slides. So it's really important to check that on an individual basis, even though you may be applying to multiple institutions. So. Life drawing is a really good example of demonstrating drawing skills within any portfolio and different approaches to drawing, um, particularly undergraduate level. We really want to see that, how you approach drawing. That can be in sketchbooks, it can be in layout sheets, whatever is appropriate to you. But drawing is crucial to most of the subjects within art and design. And we want to see how you draw with a range of different media. Uh, particularly undergraduate, that really demonstrates those core skills that are actually required within an undergraduate submission. But also drawing for your specialist subject. This is a textile student who's interested in fashion. And you can see that the students actually explored some drawing, collage and uh, image manipulation, but it's very specifically focused to a subject. The exploration of colour in a range of media as appropriate to your subject. And here, you can see examples of textile work and a fine art student who's showed as a painting. They both show the application and use of colour, and that is very important. 
equally exploring new materials and processes that are appropriate to your subject area. So it is really important if you're interested in um, a 3D subject that you show that you can translate ideas from 2D to 3D. And that's appropriate both for undergraduate and postgraduate. A sketch and ideas books are really crucial. And there's not one way to do a sketchbook. Sketchbooks are really about the individual approach. They can be very organized. They can be very messy. It's really up to the individual. But we really do want to see sketch and ideas book because they really show your personality. Um, and this is really interesting. When I, when I talk about context, as you can see from these sketchbooks, it's a fine art student who's focusing on a particular artist. It's a furniture design student who's focusing on a particular furniture designer. But they're showing their particular interest in that the subject area related to them. So when we talk about demonstrating an understanding of the context of your subject, this is what we're really talking about, is demonstrating your interest in the subject area that you want to major in. And here's just some other examples of the different approaches. The one on the top is very much focused on colour, because that's a colour. So individuality in sketchbooks is really important. It's also very important if you're applying for one of our, our digital subjects that you actually uh, submit evidence that you actually have the required skill within that subject area. And again, different subjects will ask for a different or very specific submission. But it's really important that, again, uh, you demonstrate those skills. If you're applying for a course such as photography, for instance, photographers take hundreds of photographs, but you would be asked to submit a range of photographs that communicate your particular approach to photographic practice. So I'm going to show you examples of um, undergraduate submissions so you've got an idea of the kind of submission that we would look for. The first one is a graphic design student. Um, and as you can see within this particular slide, the student has showed some examples of sort of digital work, some videography work. So they've shown a range of different approaches. Um, and then they've actually demonstrated within that portfolio um, a project that's specifically related to graphic design with the identity project. Um, and they've produced uh, a small piece of sort of graphic communication. So it really demonstrates to us that the students explored a range of different ideas. They've demonstrated their drawing and their idea development skills. And then they've really shown us um, that they can make uh, a final product that's applicable to graphic design. Here are some examples of students that have demonstrated their uh, interest in fashion and 2D to 3D application there. So that gives you an idea of the type of thing that would require for undergraduate. Obviously, postgraduate level is very different. We would expect students at postgraduate level to have a much more sophisticated and developed understanding of the subject. But individual and personal creative ideas and sketchbooks and ideas books are still really, really important. Again, we'd want to see examples of how your concepts and ideas have informed your creative development. So taking us through that, that design process. Um, we'd want to see evidence of your individual research, but particularly the development of a personal working process and methodology uh, that was developed on an undergraduate programme of study. And particularly at postgraduate level, we really do want to see examples of your technical knowledge and skills within your sp specialist subject area. And we do expect at postgraduate level to see a number of fully professionally resolved final project outcomes, because at master's level, we need to see in the portfolio that you can move from undergraduate to postgraduate level study. So the postgraduate individual creative journey, as you can see here, is quite different from the undergraduate. It's much more sophisticated. There's a working process and methodology demonstrated within these examples of graphic design work. And again, examples from the same student and where you can see the student has actually um, demonstrated a working process from initial concept development and then the final applications. So as you can see, the, there's a real demonstration within the, this number of sheets how this student um, understands the subjects, understands the application, and they've developed an individual style and approach to what they do. 
but that idea development process is really really important this is some examples of one of our um, animation students work and again you can see the creative thinking process here from that particular student there's techniques and process from one of our um, sort of fashion pattern cutting students where they've really demonstrated the different techniques and then the application within a final product and then these are just some examples of the different approaches particularly at master's level that students take um, because every master's student is very different these are some of our graphic communication examples. These are four examples of very different approaches to um, animation, showcasing individual creativity and personality. Some of our um, illustration students work. Photography, again, you know, a very personal approach that each of the students have taken in terms of them demonstrating their work. Our MA fashion students, fashion knitwear students, and then textile design. So at master's level, we'd expect that individuality. These are all some final outcomes. What I'm going to do now is talk you through how you demonstrate process within your portfolio submission. So there's a number of key pointers that we actually would want you to look at. So, you know, demonstrate your understanding of how you um, successfully answer a range of project briefs. Um, demonstrate the ability to gather and use visual research from a wide variety of sources. Demonstrate the ability to understand where your work fits within a particular market context. And that's very, very important at postgraduate level. Uh, we really want to, you to demonstrate where you think your work could be located. We expect to see 2D to 3D application as appropriate to the particular subject area. Um, the application of colour, technical information, your personal working methodology, and originality. I'm going to show you some examples of this so you can actually see what we're actually talking about. So demonstrate your understanding of how you successfully answer a range of project briefs. Um, and again, this is just some slides from that undergraduate student I previously showed. But again, you can see the core drawing skills, uh, the digital work that's developed, and then you can see some other work there. So the student has actually undertaken a range of different briefs from the identity digital art project, uh, the videography project, the uh, typography project, the, you know, so there's a number of different projects there that are showing a range of different skills from that particular undergraduate student. And that really shows an engagement with the subject. It shows that particular student's pro process and how they've actually developed that process. And then obviously that final sort of uh, application of their ideas within the final product to come. Again, here's the postgraduate one that I demonstrated. So that process demonstration is very important. The ability to gather sort of visual information is really, really important and to show who it actually is ap applied at each stage of the process. So varied approaches to drawing um, are really key. And they will be applicable differently within the subject. I mean, these examples again are for some of our graphic design students. As you can see in this case, the students actually developed the work and actually produced some more contextual information. And then there's evidence of their understanding and working through the design process. And I'm going to show you an example of a live brief. And this live brief basically demonstrates how a particular student has actually worked through a project. Um, so there was a clear brief given to this particular student um, to actually sort of develop a particular um, set of outcomes for this particular company um, that was a bakery. So they've started with the brief. They've actually done a positioning matrix. So they demonstrate an understanding of where it might be positioned within a particular market. They've looked at the competitors and what they might do within the market. Uh, They've then actually looked at kind of the, the nature of what a brand DNA might be for this particular company. Um, and then they've really started to look at different approaches to that visual identity um, of the company and what, how they might use that within their particular creative practice. In this case, they're looking at liner blocks. They've then actually got different touch points with the customer and how they might use that sort of visual language and that visual, um, those visual ideas to communicate with. Um, you know, different approaches to packaging, touch point two where there's more reusable 
uh, merchandise. Touch point three, where they've thought about the branding of the particular the shop and how that might actually sort of work. Um, then social media application, how they might use that information within sort of social media, and then how they might use that on a sort of delivery van. So as you can see from that whole process, that student has demonstrated their ability to work through a, pro a project and demonstrate an understanding of that. So for a master's degree, we'd expect someone who's applying for graphic communication to be able to show that understanding of concept, idea development, and final application. Um, and again, this is another project where the student has actually been given quite a, a clear brief. Um, and then they've actually worked through and demonstrated through their work um, a series of processes that really show their understanding of market and what the market would actually require from that particular um, output uh, for the, the, the outcome required. Again, very different for different subjects. I put this fashion design one in to show you the very different, the way that a graphic student might approach it. Graphic students, uh, fashion students approached it in a very different way, but they've looked at a very particular brand. They've done some brand research that then has informed where they actually want to position their particular work. So demonstrating, again, you can see from these four slides, a really good understanding of process and development, but also they've contextualized that within market understanding. The translation of ideas from 2D to 3D um, and your working process is very particular to individual subject areas. If we think of it something like sort of fashion design, it's very much showing that translation of ideas from the drawing stage through the cutting and development to the final application. And this is just some of the projects that our students have actually done at undergraduate and what would actually include within a, a postgraduate sort of application. Very important in fashion design to demonstrate your cutting skills. And you can see that the student has documented their process really effectively uh, within this one slide. Again, a range of um, sort of fashion ideas that then have, the student has documented within their particular um, process and development. Every student approaching it very, very differently. Here's some really good examples of product students where you can see the concept and the idea. You can see the practical sketches and then you can see the final outcome. And that's what's really, really important. It demonstrates to us your level of inquiry, your level of investigation, your level of analysis and evaluation, and then your understanding of the application, both within a market context, but also within a final product context. So it's that creative journey that's incredibly important, particularly at master's level, to really show us how you've worked through projects. Um, colour, I've just some examples here. We want to see the application of colour, or maybe not colour, if that's not what you want to demonstrate within your particular work. Um, but for most students, there will be some application of colour within it. It may be very subtle, like this sort of graphic branding. But again, it is as appropriate to your subject and your particular individuality. Here you can see examples where students have used the same logo, but they've approached it using different media with very different colours. So again, it's that individuality and personality. Um, the technical and manufacturing skills um, are appropriate. And I've put manufacturing in this twice because manufacturing is different. Some it may be digital, some it may be analog, some it may be more practical. Um, and I'll just work you through uh, this fashion pattern cutting students project to show you. So we started with a concept here. And then the student was very much looking um, at sort of um, zero waste, so looking at who she could actually maximise um, the use of fabric within the final outcome. So it's very much about sustainable, fa sustainable fashion, but also looking how she could use the technicality of pattern cutting to do that. So again, she, as you can see here, you know, she's looking at sustainability in terms of um, both the cutting and the actual garments, but you can see the process here. You can see how she's actually sort of worked through that process. There's clear, clear documentation of her development uh, or experimentation, um, how she's actually used the technology. In this case, it was the lecture cutting system to maximize the cutting within her particular project. 
So you can see the level of information and then you can see the final outcome in terms of what she's actually produced. Again, it was a prototype garment, it's not a finished product, but it very much shows a process and how she's actually worked through that process and developed that understanding. The personal working methodology is kind of encapsulated within all the, the things I've talked about before. Um, but again, this is a textile student who has adopted a very particular approach. And what she's done is there's just notes at every stage of the development. You know, in this, she's got examples of the context, the designers that she's interested in, and then related that to the kind of work and her development. And again, that really helps contextualize that in these design development boards. Um, you can really see her, her own work relates to the context and then the final application of what it is that she wants to do. So that working methodology and your individual working process is very important. And originality and personality is really important. These are some just undergraduate and postgraduate examples of individuality and individual approaches that students have taken. There's no one way to do this. It's very much about the individual. It's very much about their individual work. Um, very different for each subject, but it gives you a really good idea. So that's a kind of overview of the importance of process. As a couple of mistakes that students quite often make within their portfolio. Sometimes students put too much of the same type of work in there, and we, we really want to see a range of work. Sometimes there's too much finished work, and we want to see that development work. And when I say copying other, work, other people's work, I don't mean directly copying, but sometimes students become so influenced by a particular designer or artist that they actually inadvertently start to use a lot of that that works. So it's really important that you think carefully about who you're inspired by and how you use that. Um, some students don't use annotation, and particularly if you're providing a digital portfolio, it's really helpful to provide some annotation. That will help the admissions tutor understand the project and how you've developed it. Um, focused on aesthetic and not content. And what I mean by that is we know that PowerPoint can do some really amazing things, but we really just want to see a straightforward portfolio that demonstrates your creative practice. You don't need to be clever, and very often when students have things that fly in and out of a portfolio, it can actually corrupt it. So it's think about it, the communication message that you want to make to the admissions tutor. And boring or formulaic, and that's very much about, um, you know, some students have gone to get support from individual um, academies post-study, uh, and sometimes there's a very particular way that they will actually do or submit work. And it's really important that you assert your individuality within that final work so that I don't look at 10 portfolios that are all the same or they're all processed in the same way. A key thing for masters is very much your personal statement. Um, and whether that's for the creative subjects or it's for the most the marketing and management subjects. So we really want you to consider within that, although it's a personal statement, your reason for undertaking postgraduate study, your reason for applying to the specialist course of study at NTU. And I would say here, I know that students multiple apply, but I get applications that tell me I'm the best course in the United States, and of course, I'm based in the UK. So make sure that you bespoke your personal statement appropriate to the institution and course that you're applying for your interest, experience and knowledge within your specialist subject area, and also how you feel your skills and knowledge will contribute to the course and the broader postgraduate community, um, and how your chosen course of study will enable your future career goals and ambitions. You don't need to be absolute about that, but it will give us a good idea um, of what, if the course that we offer is right for where you might want to navigate in the future. So the personal statement it's slightly different for art and design courses in that we look for you to give us a bit of your background and then application of where you might want to go sort of in the future. Just a few quick slides at the end about our new design and digital arts building um, that Dave showed you. We're, you know, we're going to have some excellent resource in moving image, digital screen arts, visual communication. We've got a new LED virtual set, augmented reality, uh, digital innovation lab, motion capture, virtual reality, and projection mapping. So all our students, you may not be based in that building, but all our students, no matter which subject they, 
they're studying will have the opportunity to access that resource. So we really are thinking about the future of the creative industries um, across our provision within the School of Art and Design. And that just gives you um, a side view. We've got some double height spaces. So state of the art technology is being applied within our school. And that's the end of my presentation. Yeah, thank you, Wallace.